Welcome to Happy Clubhouse with a review of the Hyper Mega Bazooka Launcher for the real great high new Gundam, but this one here is made by a third party company called Effect Wings, which many model fans may have seen before here and there. Having made a number of add on kits for real great kits like the parts to make an Avalanche Exia and Astrea, the flight pack for the Astrea Red Frame, and also the GN Sword 4 full saber parts for the Quanta. But if you know them, then you also know that their products can vary wildly in quality, ranging from things that you just can't put together out of the box, like the Avalanche Exia parts, or the full saber parts for the Quanta, which work rather nicely. So I'm sure a lot of you want to see which side this kit falls, and uh, spoilers, it's pretty darn good. Getting right down to business, the Effect Wings 1144 Hyper Mega Bazooka Launcher was released approximately on November 16, 2021. I say approximately because that is the first day I saw them shipped into stores here in Hong Kong, and Effect Wings themselves don't seem to have any online presence that I can check this against. There's no set price, but my kit costed me 159 Hong Kong dollars, which is just a hair above 20 US dollars, which isn't that much when you see what's in this kit later. There are actually two versions of this kit that you can buy to match either the vanilla New Gundam or the High New Gundam, and they are in different colors. The New Gundam version also has this really cool bonus that I'm going to show you a little bit later, and this is why I picked this version over the High New one. You can see which version is inside from the front of the box right here, where mine here has the Chinese High New name blacked out. While we're here, the front has a really strangely cropped photo of the launcher and no illustration. It says Max here on the front and I'm not sure what they're trying to say. Also, notice how the box never actually says Gundam, which all third party makers do because this is some sort of IP law legal Voldemort thing that they can't ever mention. The short sides of the box are actually completely blank like this, and this. And the long sides of the box actually has a side view of the actual launcher. And the person who made this box actually went the extra mile, because on the other side, we get the other side of the launcher that's not actually the same. So good work, mysterious box drone, even though most people will never ever notice that extra bit of effort. And you'd think the back would have some info on the contents, but nope, it's completely blank except for the absolute minimum legally required labels to get this thing onto store shelves here in Hong Kong. All the kits I've seen from Effectlings are like this, and this is really nothing new. What they're making here is probably not legal with IP laws, so they kind of need to keep a low profile. This is a leap of faith you need to take whenever you buy third-party kits made from China. Inside the box, the whole box is stuffed, which I really didn't expect if it's just a gun inside. Among the things is a clearly illegal bootleg Damashi Stage Act 4, it's not even hiding how bootleggy it really is. Then the rest of the things come in two sealed bags, which is way more parts than is needed for just the launcher when I first saw this. And the answer becomes clearer when we see these three runners right here, which are the same things, but they're made in three different colors. So we have white, and then black, and then gunmetal. You see this a lot with smaller manufacturers where it's just cheaper for them to make one mold and then to swap in different plastic colors versus making three different molds with fewer parts that don't repeat because they can just charge you for the extra plastic anyway. The other parts for the launcher comes on these two runners and they don't repeat any more parts. Now here's a cool bonus you get if you pick the new Gundam version of this gun. Yes, even though they don't say it on the box, this kit comes with these replacement faces for the RG Vanilla new Gundam. In case you didn't know, the RG New Gundam changed the shape of the face where it's shorter and rounder and more in line with like other Gundams, but the traditional design of the New Gundam always had a longer face that extended further down beyond those V-shaped vents. So Effect Wings did fans an amazing favor and included these parts to mod your kit if you really prefer that classic look. Now apologies here because I don't have an RG New Gundam, so you'll have to be content with looking at just the faces. Although here's a screenshot of it if that helps. You also get a color swap one too, so you can share it with a friend if he or she can paint this. And here it is next to the HGUC new Gundam, just so you know this really is the classic long face. Apparently this is a special bonus that's only included in this first round of these kits produced. I don't know how serious Effect Wings means this or even how many people know that this is a thing at all, but it probably doesn't matter because most of the Effect Wings kits only get printed once or twice and then you're never ever going to see them restocked again, which is always a shame. Here are the parts for the bootleg Damashi stage, and there is a bit to see here actually because the ones you buy from Bandai are actually pre-assembled, so you don't normally get to see them on the runners like this. 
Now, this isn't a new thing that happens, and sometimes it's the workers that steal some of these and sell them to be cloned as bootlegs, or the OEM companies that Bandai hires in China to make these even might sell these original runners to bootleggers. But this is still quite an interesting look at these parts which we don't otherwise get to see in this form. We also get this soft rubber hose for the energy cable, which really is a hose and there's no wire in the inside, which is fine for this kit and how it's built. The diameter is a slightly awkward 2.7mm, but now that you know that, you can order some more if you want a longer cable than this one here or if this original one gets old and a little bit brittle. Then we get the second surprise here, which you probably noticed a little bit earlier, which is a sheet of water slide decals, which I really didn't think they'd include. This isn't cheaply made either, and you can see the prints are really sharply done, and all the different colors are very accurately aligned. Even the edges of each of the stickers are really tidy, and they're really thin as you can see here when the light runs over it. The kit may not be strictly legal, but it certainly isn't low quality. Then finally, we have the instructions here, which uses a ton of space for the runners here, and I'm not sure why. And then we get the actual assembly instructions, which are annoyingly all in Japanese, so you'll have to decipher when it tells you when to use the white, black, and gunmetal parts. So about 90 minutes later, we get the completed launcher right here, and it took way longer than I expected because every single part on the runner is actually undergated, which is a little extra work to clean up, but actually the trade-off here is really good. Because have a look here at the color separation. So we have white and black and gunmetal and then the dark navy here. So almost everything is color separated right out of the box. And combined with the undergating, you can actually spray all the parts on the entire runner if you want to convert this back to the high new colors and even keep the bonus face parts. Or you can easily make this any other color you want for any custom build with really minimal work, which is a bit of extra care from Effect Wings, which really deserves a lot of praise as a builder. But even in the unpainted form, the colors here are actually just fine as they are, and it's gonna have no trouble being displayed alongside with the new Gundam or high new Gundam right out of the box, which is really impressive because this has to work alongside some of the nicest looking RG kits ever made. And if it isn't obvious already, Effect Wings cared a lot about the quality here. The parts are thick and well molded with the parts evenly formed. This means that the surfaces barely have any shrinkage, which shrinkage is a really common thing you see on third party and licensed kits. A seam actually runs along parts of the barrels like this part right here, but you can see just how precise the fitting is where you won't notice the seam much at all. And parts of the barrel, like this one here, going back to the runner a little bit, is molded as one single piece, which requires a much more complicated multi-part mold rather than the usual two-part one that looks like a waffle iron. These aren't amateurs who are behind this kit, although it is kind of odd where the barrel goes from this seamless part right here. That's good. To a sandwich part. That's bad. And then seamless. That's good. And then sandwich. That's bad. Can I go now? and then seamless again. Overall, it looks fine, but it undercuts the seamless parts a little bit. Otherwise, the seams are hidden away like this bottom part right here, and these parts underneath the handle here. So there's very good attention to detail and quality in this regard. Some visible seams are this one on the top near the back here, and then also this one on the back but on the bottom. Speaking of this bottom part, it actually has the same function as the Metal Robot Damashi version of this gun where it unlocks here and you can swing the entire segment on two hinges which the instructions don't tell you for some reason. It's not super important for posing and it's just sort of here to show off that Effect Wings can include this on a model kit for a much lower price. And other moving parts include the handle itself here which swings from side to side so it can accommodate kits that don't move so well. Then there's this really cool handle up top which can swing out, which you'd expect. But this whole thing can slide along the rails to the back like this, which is this kit once again matching the Robot Damashi version punch for punch. Although if you're painting this, the friction here is kinda strong so the paint will chip off if you move it, and there's really not a whole lot you can do about this. Then you might suspect, well hey, is this some sort of bootleg model kit that just remolds the Robot Damashi version of this launcher? And the simple answer is, well no, it isn't. The designers probably use that one as a base for a lot of the work here, but you can see that they aren't just clones like the mechanical parts here in the middle that have different details, and the barrel of the gun that has several different details on the model kit. Now I don't have the Robot Damashi gun myself, so I can't tell you if this is bigger or smaller than that one, but it most definitely is cheaper. 
Speaking of things I don't have, I also don't have the RG version of this launcher. It's available in stores here right now, but it's just way too expensive for the budget I have. But in case it isn't super obvious, that one is a completely different design that we've seen in the comics with a really boxy and rich look that I actually think clashes a little bit with the High New Gundam's look. The one here is the earlier version of the gun that we've seen in G Generation, and it also appears in the newest Super Robot Wars 30. And that one seen in games actually look a little bit closer to the new Gundam colored one that we have here, and it doesn't actually have the High News's purple color. Another function taken from the robot Damashi gun is this gigantic energy pack that can be removed with just the right amount of friction provided by that long slit, so it's not gonna fall off, but you still can take it off without it fighting you. And continuing with the praises, the energy cable here plugs into the gun on this end with a really firm grip so it won't slip when you move the gun and you handle it. On the other end, it terminates with this part right here which you can have in black or gunmetal if you prefer. But the best thing about this part is how it's made to fit into the fat holes on an action base, so it goes right in like this. Which makes posing this kit incredibly clean, though this is something they also learned from the robot Damashi launcher as well to be honest. You can have the gun on your high new Gundam without any additional stands or any bits dangling, and the length of the cord is just right for swinging around naturally. Now, let's go to Crazy Town here where we have this adapter piece which is certainly not something from the robot Damashi gun. There is a peg that points sideways like this and you can plug the end of the energy cord into it like this. Then, the gun itself actually clips on right here and that gives us a storage mount, but what on earth are we going to store this thing into? The thing is, Effect Wings made their own heavy weapon system parts for the RG New Gundam, which came with this original thing which they call the Tactical Armor Transporter. So not only does this thing carry all the HWS parts, but now you can mount this whole darn gun onto the transporter. I've never seen this transporter kit myself, but now I really want one just to try this out. We've already seen that this works with the RG High New Gundam, and of course it does because this gun is made for that. But sadly, this doesn't work with the HGUC High New Gundam because the handles are too thick for the hands to hold, which maybe you already knew if you ever tried giving RG weapons to an HG kit. At first, it seems to work with the HGUC New Gundam which has bigger hands, and it seems mostly fine here, but the gun can't peg into the hand and the weight of the gun will rip the fingers right off the hand. In fact, that's exactly what it did to mine and it even broke the peg. Though I think this peg has already been handled many times and it was a little bit worn down already. And don't worry, I fixed it after this video. Also, the handle on top can't actually be held by the new Gundam since the other holding hand can't grip the fat handle. So the simple answer is, this gun is made for RG hands and it's just not going to work with HG kits without some alterations from you. Here's a look at that bootleg display stand all by itself. If you've ever had a Damashi stage before, you've seen this exact thing. It is a clone, so you will immediately feel the rough edges and all the uneven surfaces, and the quality is starkly different from the gun, even though the clear plastic they used here is actually very high quality. We've seen that the RG High New can actually hold the entire gun confidently by itself, and the gun isn't actually as heavy as you might think. But if you want to give it some extra support, there is a hole here that works with any 3mm peg, so you can use any action base on it as well. Now the good thing with the bootleg display here is that you do get screws on the joints just like the real ones, and this makes these joints really strong and it'll keep the gun up in any position you like, so it's actually really useful. If you have a really strong compulsion against anything bootleg, you can always toss this one in the trash or give it to a friend and go find a set of real ones and they will work exactly the same. The stand itself is made from ABS plastic, even though the rest of the gun is our usual polystyrene. They don't tell you this anywhere on the instructions or in the box, and builders will probably want to know this information. And here's the gun next to the RG High New, and despite the High New being kinda tall, the gun is of course taller. And here it is next to the HGUC High New, even though it can't use the gun. It's even shorter, so the gun looks even more massive. And here it is against our lower end benchmark the entry-grade RX-78. And here's the upper-end benchmark, the high-grade new Gundam. And just because I can, here it is next to the ultra-small F-91. And then here's the even smaller James gun. At this point, the size difference really is getting kind of ridiculous. With all that said, 
Here's a Hobby Clubhouse 3 point verdict on the Effect Wings 1144 Hyper Mega Bazooka Launcher. Number 1. It has high quality materials and it's well designed. It really has to come at the top of this list that Effect Wings put your $20 to great use with thick, dense polystyrene for the entire gun that's completely color separated, and it has small moving gimmicks ported over from a much more expensive figure. And the precise molding looks really beautiful right out of the box. The designers of Effect Wings really set out to make a high quality model kit and you'll really love the value you get for the money you pay. And number 2. It does what Bandai won't. This sort of. A lot of people really love the RG Launchers' new design and that really aggressive boxy look that packs a lot of punch. But just as many people scratched their heads a bit and wholly expected this older design instead that we've already gotten and we've already accepted. So Effect Wings came along and gave us this gun in a model kit form which Bandai would deny itself. Whatever is the reason you want this particular gun, whether it's for your RG kit or for a build, we fans now have an answer to our prayers. And that philosophy holds extra true for these new replacement face parts that we get for the RG New Gundam. For sure, this is a kit that's exactly what many fans want and can now actually own. Now, to be fair, almost every function of this has been copied from the Robot Damashi gun, and depending on how you look at it, either that takes some marks away from this kit, or maybe you think it's pretty neat that they managed to fit all the same functions into a much cheaper model kit. And number 3, this is gonna piss off a lot of crazy people. Now I didn't know this before I had this channel, but there are a lot of people who really hate it when I don't praise everything about an RG kit. And this kit right here, it rejects Bandai's redesigns for the RG kits. Undoing the newer launcher design and that's one sin, and then also undoing the shorter face of the new Gundam which is a mega sin. On top of that, this is an unlicensed kit and a lot of people will just go out of their way to dislike this kit. And you know what, I like this kit more because it upsets those people. So that's a review of the Effect Wings Hyper Mega Bazooka Launcher, which is third party but certainly not third rate, and if you're at all interested, you should pick one up before they disappear back into the grey void where they came from. Thank you so much for watching, come look us up on social media with updates on upcoming videos and sneak peeks at future projects, links are in the description below. Or hang out here some more with one of these other videos. But before you go, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon to be notified of new videos from Hobby Clubhouse, and I'll see you next time.